This is the Baloney Tales, Season 1, The Baloney in the Mist. This story was originally written in Japanese for an anime and was later translated to English for Americans. Episode 1, The Unsheathed. The sun is shining on Futka on a Sunday morning. Deep in the autumn season, a man of great stature arises in his bed. The light peeking through the blinds of his beige curtains, an unknown entity appears in the room. A man by the name of Peter Soup is awoken. Peter exclaims, What, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I am the Baloney King. You cannot escape this room, for there is an invisible barrier that cannot be destroyed unless the sword is sucked. Nani! How will I ever suck the sword? Won't it cut my mouth apart? said Peter. <laughs> Since you cannot escape, I will unsheath my sword, which will lay a curse of a thousand years upon you and your family, and your extended family, even the ones by marriage. This curse will make you wipe on every Final Fantasy raid you ever do. Oh, Kurswa! said the Baloney King. Peter cries out, No! How will I ever beat the twinning? Or, or even E4S? The Baloney King states, The only way to clear the curse is to learn how to transmute baloney out of the particles of the air. Deep in the void, only this power can be found. Peter straightens up, I will do the quest to transmute baloney, for my daughter will die if I don't beat E4S. After Peter was confronted by the Baloney King, he knew what he needed to do. He got on Final Fantasy first thing and did his dailies, so he didn't have to worry about them for the rest of this big day. After finishing the main scenario quest duty, Peter remembered the Baloney King said something about sucking a sword. He realized that he had a friend from grade 10 who now is an export, expert sword sucker. His friend still wore his Garukin, from, ch from school while performing the socks. Peter knew his stomping grounds wasn't far. He grabbed his Digimon backpack and ran out the door. Heading into town, he walks past many shops, although one catches his eye. It's a dietary supplement store. His head starts to swim as he receives vivid flashbacks from three months ago. It was a dark evening. Peter was sitting in his living room watching the latest episode of My Hero Academia with his daughter. Two masked individuals who appeared to be men with BMIs of over 45 kick the front door in. The one unsheaths his katana, the fluorescent light shines on it, and the katana is engraved with Gorilla Pig. The other masked man goes into the red mage battle stance holding a rapier at Peter's direction. The masked dude demands, Nobody fucking move! Peter laughs. Ha! A rapier? I piss on red mages in PvP. My rapier is blessed by the blood of Garrosh. I have come from another realm to get our revenge. Peter chuckles. Ha! I dreamed of this day. I prayed to the gods it wouldn't happen, but fate has decided that we must duel. <laughs> no need to duel on this day, Peter. We came for your daughter, and the only way to get her back is to beat E4S. <laughs> the masked dude smirks underneath his mask. Peter's confused, but, but, but why? The prophecy of the gorilla pig must be foretold. Our ancient sect rejects the gods of Axon. I won't let you take my daughter. This is fucking crazy, man. The masked dude is getting furious. We will kill you both where you stand if you don't give her. The masked dude with the katana pulls out a small book. He points to Peter and mumbles words from his ancient scriptures. Stop that, you freaking creep, says Peter in disgust. The other masked dude with the rapier proclaims, My teacher here says you will have a visit from the Baloney King within a fortnight. Without a moment to spare, both the masked man and his good daughter are gone with a flash. Peter shakes his head in a daze, 
trying to make sense of his flashback for a long time, as this event has haunted his dreams every night since. He continues walking down the streets until he finds his friend's store, but first, he walks by a massive church. In big letters, the door says, DJ Imbo. He decides to walk in. Peter notices a man praying to a statue. The man looks at him. Hello, sir. I'm Genji. Welcome to the church of DJ Imbo. <laughs> Come, pray with me. Peter says, I I'm not a very religious dude, but I was curious of the teachings of DJ Imbo. Genji smiles at the adult man. <laughs> in the scriptures, it states of many deities which formed the universe and keeps it in balance. DJ Imbo is just one of those deities. He is the god of nature. Stories were told for generations of his shape-shifting abilities. He helped formed animals and plants in the rivers and the mountains. He did not do this on his own. With the help of the other deities, he was able to forge our mortal world. DJ Embo taught us that we must respect nature, and nature will respect us back. Peter looked up at the statue. He noticed that DJ Embo was ride riding a buffalo, looking out at the mountains. Peter couldn't believe his eyes at the beauty. He pondered about life and how the gods play a role in this universe. They may have the answer to defeat the Baloney King and his band of gorilla pigs. Peter says, Genji, I must go and find my friend Gaifen adds. Genji gets excited. Oh, the expert sword sucker. Well, he's right next door. Thank you for praying with me. <laughs> no, thank you, Genji. That prayer hit different. Peter leaves the church and goes next door. He looks up at the store and the storefront reads, Gaifenad's dummy thick sword suck. Peter smirks at the thought of his friends sucking his sword real good. He, will, he walks in and sees Gaifenad's training a novice sword sucker. Hello, senpai Gaifenad's. <laughs> How are you doing on this fine evening? Hello, Peter. I haven't seen you since our moms used to make us wear dresses and take pictures of us. <laughs> Peter smiles. I know it's been such a long time. We should take a look at those photos again. <laughs> Maybe you can teach me the art of sucking a sword. <laughs> Gaifenads gets real serious. Sword sucking isn't just an art form. You can transmute energies into sucks into, into the swords if you suck correctly. I didn't know that was possible, senpai. I, I must tell you, I was confronted by the Baloney King and he wanted me to suck his sword. I, I don't understand why. Gaifenad's eyes open in horror. I've only heard old folklore about the Baloney King. He, he must be trying to manipulate, manipulate you and put your energies on his sword. Once he does that, he can use those energies to empower other beings. <laughs> Gaifenads, will, will you help me? Peter cried out. I can teach you much about sword sucking, but we must run along and visit my guru, Ricket Randy. He lives up in the tallest mountain in the cave. It was him who told me stories of the Baloney King long ago. Gaifenads is interrupted by a phone call. Gaifenads exclaims, Hello, who dare speak? Peter can only hear the distant mumbles. Gaifenads gasps. No, it, it can't be. Nani, I must go. Gaifenads hangs up the phone. What, what, what's wrong? Peter is frightened. Gaifenads says, We must leave now for Rickett Randy. The Baloney King took all the gill off of my Final Fantasy character, and then he slaughtered all my real-life children. I can always make more children, but that gill is worth more than my life. I must get it back now! Gaifenads gently strikes his shoko once as they leave the building. Gaifenads and Peter travel up the mountain to find Gaifenads guru, Ricket Randy. They come across a big cave in the mountains. Hello, I'm Ricket Randy, and I live in this cave, and my bones are very weak. Can you please assist me with doing my dailies on Final Fantasy XIV? 
Gaithanad's face lights up. Well, of course. I still can't believe you can get internet up here in these mountains. Rick at Randy smirks. Through the power of sword sucking, anything is possible. That's, that's why we came up here. We need to know the ancient secrets of sword sucking. The Baloney King will not stop his destruction. Gaithan adds, looks at the ground. Rickett Randy eats a piece, piece of Pisha and says, I was old friends with the Baloney King when we were teenagers. He, he was very powerful, like the energy quirk that Laser Man uses. Gaithan adds a stunt. <laughs> That's overpowered as fuck, bro. How did he become one of the best for Oculus with his quirk? He uses an energy offloading apparatus, just like the Baloney King uses. This way, he is able to shield his own weaknesses with this apparatus. He can also control gorilla pigs. He hypothetically can conquer galaxies. Gaifenads is flabbergasted. What can we do, Rickett Randy? I need to get my gill back on Final Fantasy. Peter chimes in and says, And I need to clear this curse so I can do raids as well. Rick at Randy starts to ponder. I think I have an idea. I can go out on the quest with you. However, I'm in a wheelchair, and it's a very rocky path down the mountain. So I'm going to fall out of my wheelchair a lot, and I also can't control my urine, so you guys need to help me with my Foley catheter. Gaithan adds, pulls out a sword. Rick at Randy, if you suck my sword... We can fuse our bladders together, like La Habrea and Ignorium fused into an Assian prime. Rickett Randy opens his mouth. He puts his mouth on Gaithanad's sword. The sword clings on his rotten teeth. Rickett Randy lightly sucks. He can feel a miracle happen inside of him. <laughs> Gaithanad's... I, I, I don't need my catheter anymore. <sighs> How did you make this miracle happen? Gaithanad says, <laughs> The student has become the master. Through your teachings, Rickett Randy, I was able to achieve a very complex level of understanding with sword sucking. Now I have fixed your bladder problem. Henceforth, there is no time to waste. What is the next step, Rickett Randy? Rickett Randy can't believe what he just witnessed. He's never seen someone use the power of sword sucking like this. We must enter the portal in the cave above us. In this portal is the land of Goopy. It is only there where we can track down the Baloney King's apprentice. The place I speak of is full of darkness. We must recruit a dark knight to get us through the darkness safely. Rickett Randy's, Gaifenads, and Peter head down the mountain. Gaithanads and Peter consistently have to pick Rickett Randy up because the wheelchair isn't made for rocks because he keeps falling down. The three of them head back into town to find a dark knight to get them to the land of Goopy. A spy for the Baloney King was sitting atop the mountain watching the three men go back into town. The spy calls the Baloney King and informs them about their plans. The spy speaks quietly. Senpai Baloney, Peter's trying to get rid of his curse. He is planning to go to the land of Goopy. The Baloney King is sitting in his castle, reclined on his throne, as he listens to his spy talk. The Baloney King bursts into laughter. <laughs> if he wants to go to the land of darkness, so be it. I will send a couple gorilla pigs to take care of this insignificant Final Fantasy player. Let's see if they can handle my two trusty gorilla piggies, Oinker and Soft Belly. The Baloney King bursts into uncontrollable laughter. Ha 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 